Hello, and welcome again to another episode of How to Avoid Murder and Other Awkward Situations. I am your host, Dave, and with me always is the lovely Laura. And tonight, we're going to discuss something gruesome and something horrible. We may laugh, we may make some jokes, we use gallows humor here. It's not for the faint of heart, you may be offended. And if you're a delicate boy that plays the drums in an alt-rock band from Chicago, you will be offended. And you probably should listen to something else, something that decent folks listen to. I wouldn't know, because I'm not listening to it. And so, without further ado, let's proceed. Hey, we're back again. It's Dave and Laura for another episode of How to Avoid Murder and Other... Well, probably just murder. We we won't get in (laughs) awkward situations, but... They're all kind of awkward. Yeah. It's awkward when you're killed by someone that you love or or a stranger or... I don't know. Maybe me. Staring through your window as you listen to this. Ah, look out. Awkward. Anyways, um, tonight, not to break with tradition, Laura is going to do a presentation. It's going to be a sexy presentation, I hope. Let's not make it sound. That sounds very dry. If you say a presentation, it, I, I regretted saying presentation yeah. as soon as it came out of my mouth. No, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about murder, Dave. Let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about a murder. I'm against it in some cases. I'm for it in others. So, I really want to do an episode where I'm cheering for people. That Justifiable can, murders. Yeah, we should do one of those. But this is not going to be. This one. is not one of those. I know. I mean, here's. Do you ever wonder this though? Do you ever like read? About some horrible, you know, like a random murder, and then just the a thought just flips through your brain that thinks, "I wonder if that person that was murdered just was a terrible person." You know what I mean? Well, I mean, a lot of times I look for context There's, clues to see if there is if there. I mean, just person. if it was randomly like a random murder, like a like a just completely random one of those things, you think. Well, I mean, There's you... got to be some people randomly murdered, and that person was like a horrible, abusive person or something. But, but it's like when, when they... You know what I mean? And it just but happened you... to be. They can't all be saints. Well, it's like when they show a, a picture of that person, if they're wearing, like, say, a Tommy Hilfiger shirt, then it's like, yeah, not so bad. Or you know, if it's like, if there's some, like, you know, uh, carnival apparatus in the background, too. It's like, mm-hmm. well... No, I mean that. that yeah, carnival but, apparatus. You know, like somebody at a boardwalk, and there's a beach in the middle. You know, oh yeah, fuck those people who go to boardwalks. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> fuck them hard. Fuck them in the ass. Well, that took was a that, turn. That, that was a jump. That was a jump. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Go on. My well, my talk of sodomy is so, side. God, you jumped into the sodomy pretty quick. This does not have anything to do with rape or sodomy for once. Damn it! Oh, what are we even <laughs> doing here? Oh my god! But it does have to do with um, a, a segment of society that many people find themselves victimized by. I feel like rapists and sodomists are off. The right, but I people. feel like more people are victimized by this segment of society than by than than are raped because they're. Yes, we're doing episode about ticks. <laughs> long, ticks they're are, long. The ticks suck. Don't wear shorts. Uh, okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, teenage girls. Wouldn't God, you say? I'm terrified. I, I teenage girls still kind of upset me. I mean, I just watched Mean Girls <laughs> for the tenth time, at least. It's a great movie, and it really yeah, it's hilarious. But it does kind of capture a certain. There is just like a certain horrible evilness to teenage girls, where they just do mean shit to each other, and it's real hard to figure out why. There's like no good reason like you know inviting 99 out of 100 kids to a party and then tweeting pictures or whatever not tweeting snapchatting pictures of the party to the one friend that they didn't invite why would you do that adults don't do that i i don't know i feel like teenagers are just little microcosms of uh are they are they just all id that that's what i always kind of want like I read I've read a couple of things that say like teenagers don't have a fully formed frontal lobe, right? Mm-hmm. So they lack impulse control. Their morals are a little fuzzy. Reality's a little fuzzy. Permanence is kind of an abstract issue to them. You know, they don't quite that none of that's quite there. So they are kind of like little psychopaths. But I mean, is it like they're kind of just all they're just kind of going on their their it is driving them? 
I don't know. I went to an, like an infield party at a NASCAR race once, and that description would apply to like ninety five percent of the people I met there. Well, not everyone moves past that stage. That's the problem. No, I mean, I, I don't know. When you, I mean, you care. I mean, teenage behavior to adult behavior. I mean, there's a little bit of uncertainty. There's a little bit of guesswork, and then eventually they reach an age where they realize it's all just a big nothing, and we were living just to die, and it's all you can do to hang on each day and not end your life in some horrible manner. What the hell, what's what? wrong with you? No, I'm just saying. You know, teenagers have hope. And that hope is blended with horror. And, you know, I don't know. I think also they're living... Here's the other thing about being a teenager. You're in this adult body and you have kind of a close to an adult intellect, at least, right? But you're still living in this weird little microcosm. You haven't really been out in the world much. Your whole world is basically your middle school or high school. Your friends, your enemies, your family, your neighbors... That's pretty much it. You haven't really, you haven't really ever gone on beyond that. So everything comes becomes really magnified in importance because nothing's really happened to you yet. I mean, it's a weird, it's a weird time in your life. And I think, I mean, how many crimes have we talked about that involve teenagers? At least, at least one other one because the least polar one. Right? Yeah, right. That one. That and was then, a, And I've got the Rhode Island one. I'll be doing in a few weeks, which is ooh. one of my favorites. But uh, um, well, we're, lots of and lots of murders involving teenagers because they are kind of psycho. So, are we talking about the killer tonight or the victim? I mean, well, I think we're going to talk kill. about the whole murder. But the the one murder that this has haunted me since it happened was that mur- the the mean girl murder, the friends who murdered their their other their third best friend, and the girl who got murdered. His name was Jesus. Skyler Niece. You know, the third best friend never fares well. The in third best situation. friend that is a tricky situation. It's always tricky. On the other hand, when you have two kids who are best, best friends and they're inseparable, that's a tricky situation. Now, with three, some work out. It's even like the Holy Trinity. There's there's the Father, there's the Son, there's the Holy Spirit, but look, it gets crucified. You know, the Father and the Holy Spirit are doing just fine. They're like, yep, I'm fuck that guy. I'm always confused by the Holy Spirit, but we won't get into that right now. Okay. Um, anyway, so yes, yeah, so, so Skylar Niece was a 16-year-old girl who had two best friends Although really, looking into the case, it looks like it. What it seems like to me is she had this. She had a best friend for a long time. In fact, they had been friends since they were about seven. A girl named Sheila Eddy. Does that ever last with girls, though? Yeah, I'm. Mean, well, I mean, it often goes up and down, which is why this case is so terrifying, because girl friendships almost always run hot and cold, to some extent. There'll be falling outs. There'll be, you know, getting back together. There'll be, you know, periods of time where they're, they're, they're sort of, you know, go their separate ways and then sometimes become friends again. So, so Sheila and Skylar had been friends since they were little kids. They were really good friends. They, they went on like trips with each other's families and stuff. And, but then in high school, um, Sheila became friends with this girl named Rachel Rachel Schof, and the three of them became BFFs. But as we know, you can't be three BFFs. You just they can't have three equal BFFs. One person's the one person's the key person who the other two feel like is their BFF. And I'm speaking from the point of view of a former teenage girl. This is this is always there's always one that the other two kind of feel like that's their best friend and and so then to really? each of those yeah well there has to be in a triad what couldn't, well, couldn't it go like in a circle in the triad like but that they, would be weird but it would also be like you know it would work there's always there's always sort of a central person i think hmm. that, no. the, that the that the two other people are closer to that person than they are to each other so, it just seems to work that way i guess otherwise how would it work like let's say it's like you know you know, you're going to be best friends with, you know, you're the closest to this, you know, person A, but they're closest to person B, but then person B thinks they're closest to you. That doesn't make any sense. It's a constant stream of unrequited friendship where you just kind of walk in circles trying to police each other. Yeah, I know. No, no. So the problem, the problem happens was when that person sort of then becomes closer to one of the two other people and they start to edge that third person out that third person starts to become well, a third wheel it may be so bold to analyze female relationships before we get into it but go for it give woman, it a shot teenage girls in particular and women in general have that special feature that i like to call 
vaginas. And that's something that every guy wants to get into. And just by default, m women, there'll be men walking up to them, hidden on them, I mean, in a good or bad way, for their entire life, starting at a certain age. Yeah, it's creepy. It's it, true. It is creepy. It's true. Starting Where, from, whereas, like, age 11. You know, so at some point, that that the fact that that factor's there, there's always going to be a wedge. There's always going to be a guy that's going to that's gonna cause... Mm -hmm. well, well, let me say there's always going to be some dude that's going to want to be... I feel like you're making this about guys, and this is not about... Well, fine. I feel like you're assuming that a man caused this whole problem. I'm not, well, I'm not assuming that. And I think you're actually wrong in I, this case. I, I don't know what the problem is. I'm saying that... This that's... story passes the Bechdel test. Oh, well. No, I don't think that this was actually over a boy. But thank you for assuming that all girl problems are about boys. I don't think they are. Yeah, I'm not saying... Okay, I'm a, or, or cause. I'm just saying that that, that that dynamic, though, is... Okay, you look at my teenage self. I think the foundation of most of my friendships with guys who I'm still friends with now was basically a barter and exchange system of low-grade softcore porn because we didn't actually have girls beating down our doors. Okay. I don't know. It just wasn't really a... No, yeah, girls, sorry. Girls, I, go girl on. I, I don't know the different. facts yet. Girl, yes, sometimes girls fight over. Where's that wine? It's over there somewhere. Okay, go on. Um, girls sometimes fight over boys or compete over boys, but... Like, in my experience being a teenage girl, I don't remember any major fights. We were pretty respectful of each other. If somebody had a thing for some guy, the others of us would generally back off. I'm, I'm sure that there's competition over boys among female friendships. I know there is. But I'm saying that there's often, like, less concrete reasons for girls to fight things like loyalty talking about each other behind their backs well, one of the biggest problems is you have more than two people two of them talk about the, th the other person that person finds out it's just like remember in mean girls which i'm going to probably reference multiple times mm -hmm. remember when they're like talking on the phone and it's like two of them talking on the phone and the one's like so and so is just she's just being so annoying and then and then the third person, the per, then the person who called, the first one's like, see, so-and-so, I told you she wasn't mad. Like, and she'd had her on the phone the whole time. So it was like a trick. She'd tricked right. her into saying something about her in front of her. That's, that to me rings true. That just sort of bullshitty, bitchy competitiveness and, you know, undermining loyalty. I don't know. Ugh. I'm glad I'm not a teenage girl anymore. No. Yeah. I you don't, can... I mean, I think adult women have some catty crap that they do to each other sometimes but i think for the most part it gets better it gets better teenage girls if you're listening it's it gets a, better that's a theme too in our show it gets better <laughs> oh god yeah well i mean i, I don't know that I, phrase I, should just be repeated on a loudspeaker to everybody under the age of 30 i mean I, I, yeah i mean i don't know i teenage girls were a mystery when i was a teenager they're a mystery now as a parent i don't know what's going through their head at any given time I, I am surprised, just in my experience now as a parent, seeing the level of uh, of hurt and angst that are caused by things that I would never even have noticed as a teenage boy. Can I can I give you a really like my um uh hold on I just lost my train of thought my anthropological analysis of of, of girl behavior. I was insistent. I insist that you do. I'm I'm sure I did not come up with this. I'm I'm sure I'm not the only person that this is a pretty. Um, pop psychology little analysis but anyways I always try to like look at human behavior and think like why would the cavemen have done this because I feel like that explains a lot of it it actually does you have to think like okay why would why would people do this well what would have been the re what would have been the biological reason driving cavemen to do that okay so girls do a lot of this undermining each other they click together they'll, they'll form close-knit bonds, and then they'll push out the outsiders, right? Okay. But if you think about it from, like, a caveman perspective, so say you've got this caveman group, right? They're all living together in the caves. The men are off being probably killed hunting mammoths or whatever, right? Yeah. I, I the get, men are off trying to hunt. Or masturbating. They don't need to... I don't think hunting takes the that men, long. <laughs> the men don't <laughs> need... Like, we're being gone all day! The, thing, the men don't need to worry about... For, they kind of need to just be out there looking out for each other so they don't get killed by a bear or something. I, I imagine. And, and help each other take down a, a buffalo or something, right? I don't think it was But the hard, women yeah. are all back at the cave village. They're raising the kids. Doing the real work. Yes. Hunting a buffalo. 
Yeah, it's like, exactly. yeah, it's like that's a half hour. That's a. Have you ever seen a buffalo? You can just walk up to one and knock well, it on I, the head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the rest of the day, probably sitting See? There jerking the, out a buffalo hoof. The, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the caveman analogy, it works for a lot of situations. It really does. Uh, it does. So, but the women are all back. They're all, they're having to take care of all the little cave babies and cave kids, right? And they're having to pretty much do all the, the gathering and preparing of, you know, whatever yeah. berries and roots and probably trying to procure shelter and basically everything else. <laughs> We're trying to keep everything else going. So if you've got like, say, you know, 10 cave women and they're competing over these resources, well, it makes sense for the strongest, smartest ones to band together to help each other. And then those other ones, those stragglers, they're just bringing down the whole group. They're just a drain on the resources. They're taking up resources that could be taken up by those those alpha cave women's children. And, you know, let's face it, they could be a threat to the women getting the, the, the best cavemen. I mean, you don't want competition. So I'm saying there's actually... I really, I swear to God, I think there's a biological reason for women to kind of form these bonds because, I don't know, does that sound really no, sound it's unfeminist? Sounds... I'm not trying to be, I'm just saying, I think that there's a biological reason for women, even now, like, to form bonds because you got to, taking care of, you know, your your hearth and home and everything, It's it falls on the women still, and it's a lot to deal with, and it, and it's, it takes a village Okay, I put in those, a cave village. I put in those bookshelves, and I didn't complain when you criticized them because put in those they were fucking crooked. bookshelves crooked, <laughs> and I had to fix them. Who's painting the house? Me, the elf of male, female. <laughs> well, you're off hunting a buffalo all yeah, day, yeah, all day long. It takes a long time. I hunt oh. buffalo ten months out of the year. I'm just on my off <laughs> those, season. Those buffaloes are tricky, though. It's not like a, it's not like a one hour deal. It's like an all day thing. Uh huh. Don't go through my pockets, though. You, you won't like what you find. Ew. Um, so, okay. Anyways, though, made, anyways, to... I just think that there's, you know, I don't know. It, it seems like men, if they're if they're not getting along, they just hit each other. But women are a lot more subversive because, I don't know. I feel like that manipulation, there's some sort of biological basis for it. But anyways, I'll just, I'll stop talking about that. Well, back to Skylar, though. Skylar. So, so, poor Skylar. So Skylar had this best friend, Sheila. Sheila got to be friends with Rachel. The three of them were a trio for a while. So the rumor goes, and this is truly a rumor, it was like alluded to in the trial that there were, that the girls, there were some secrets among them that secrets. they didn't want exposed. And one of the rumors, secrets. one of the rumors <laughs> was that Sheila and Rachel had had some sort of sexual you know, whatever relationship, the two of them. Wait, how old were they? They were 16. Yeah. It's not totally unhurt. I mean, yeah, first I mean, of all, in this day and age, it doesn't a, seem to be that big of a deal among teenagers that they would care that much if it was. I mean, I guess it depends on where they live. They lived in West Virginia. So maybe it wasn't a terribly tolerant town. Also, maybe, it, I don't know. This is, this is pure rumor. But anyways, that was one speculation that some people made after the fact that Maybe that was the secret that they didn't want exposed by by Skylar. But anyways, the trio started to have problems, and they started to kind of have a falling out. You know, um, just just real quick, it's almost like there's this, there's always a scapegoat over the uh, the cultural boogeyman is at that point. Like in the eighties, it was Satan. I know. And, and, and what, what year did this happen? This was recent. This was 2013, 2012, 2013. Yeah, I could see them being the boogeyman being you know. You know, homosexuality or lesbianism. I, I really, I feel like that that would have been more of a boogeyman in the eighties or nineties. Well, you've been in West Virginia. It's but in West Virginia, maybe it's twenty right years now. ago. I don't know. Yeah, not not to hate on West Virginia. No offense to our fans in West Never Virginia. Never been there. Oh yeah, I have. I I've, have been there. I've been there. I had a fucking blast. When it I was, was beautiful, there. actually. But <laughs> yeah. I didn't meet anybody, so I don't know what their thoughts were. How progressive their thinking was. I've, but I've not heard good things. I've partied my ass off there. Really? Yeah. Uh, did you ever see that that, uh, that documentary, the, the Wild and Wonderful Whites? Oh yeah, yeah. The, here's the West Virginia mating call. He shakes a bottle. Oh uh, yeah. Like Sorry, West Virginians. <laughs> That's totally what I think of when I hear of West Virginia. <laughs> Don't blame I'm us. sure. Blame those pussy documentary makers. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. that there's a lot of lovely people in West Virginia. I had fun in your state. You know who you are. <laughs> uh, All right, go on. Okay, so anyway, um, 
Yeah, so they started to have some sort of falling falling out. Okay. Um, Skylar was kind of starting to drift away from the other two girls. They were getting like, they were kind of infighting. They were getting annoyed with her. Um, but they were still friends. And, you know, it was just one of those weird things. So um, I guess that Sky, um, that Sheila and Rachel had started to supposedly had started to worry that if the friendship had dissolved, that Skylar would have divulged some sort of secret, which we'll never really know what that secret actually was in reality. And they, they, you know, were, were sort of, those two were becoming like a inseparable duo and Skylar was the odd girl out. And, um, they started to kind of joke around about like getting rid of her. Mm. And they first joked around about it, like in their science class. And I guess later on other kids in school said they'd heard them, making comments about killing Skylar, but of course assumed that it was a joke because who's going to believe that people that they know are going to kill someone. How often do you think that happens? You know, I mean, like, I mean, I I wish death upon people, I'd say at least once every 10 or 15 seconds per day. Well, and it's like, you go like, I'm going to kill so-and-so. Right. Or just saying it. Or like, I'm so annoyed that I killed so-and-so and now I have to clean it up and I can't. Yeah. So it's, yeah. yeah. Here's here's the red flag there. If you hear a lot of details, that's probably not just a joke. I mean, in all honesty, this is not a criminal activity, but I, I, I did spend an entire breakfast one day when I was in college with three friends where we plotted out the murder of somebody in great detail as to how to get the weapon, get rid of the body, just hypothetically speaking. Was it a person that you knew? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Were you mad at them? Uh, you weren't really mad at them. I was just thinking, wouldn't life be better if this person wasn't around? Oh, that's and, chilling. Because that's exactly what these two girls But no, I'm saying, but like, I, we were at this restaurant called Jimmy's in Valparaiso, uh-huh. Indiana, and we sat around, and like, it was like we were troubleshooting it. Like, one guy said, well, he, he's like, well, I couldn't do anything because when I was a kid, my mom took me to get fingerprints, and so I'm, I have a database. And I said, well, then just wear gloves. Okay? You don't have to, like, and it, it started there. And it wasn't like we, we, I wasn't there planning, but like he had mentioned casually, I wish I could kill this person. And it just went on and on. But like it was, it was well over an hour. It got to the point where we had it all worked out where, you know, you could buy, my, my thought was you buy a firearm or generic knife with cash at like a Kmart or a Walmart store where there's no registrants in Indiana or at a gun show. Basically, you don't have to register a gun in Indiana? You can, you can, well, you can buy a rifle or a shotgun here without really any ID. You don't have to register it? I thought you had to. No, I mean, oh, some, for fuck's most sakes, America, get your shit together. Yeah, you, well, you can go to Walmart and stuff like that in some states, or, or Kmart. Remember that, and just buy a rifle. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, or you can huh. just waltz into Walmart and then just sashay out with a stolen machete and stab someone to death. Did you yeah. know about that? Oh yeah, no, I <laughs> no, but but basically, my my conclusion was you had to get this person somewhere isolated. And like either you, you know, dispose of them, and then you dispose of the body. That was the best way to do it. And you got, you got to know like basically Walmart was our one stop shop for for murder. It's probably one stop shop for a lot of people's. Murders. Yeah, I mean, because I, I, I want to get a tarp. You and get my, a lot of things. And my and whole thing cheap. was with the gun versus the knife. You want someone to kill them quickly so there's no struggle. You don't want them to escape. Once they're dead, they're dead, and then this is getting rid of the body. That you know. So that's creepy that you guys are talking about that. Because that's basically what Sheila and Rachel started doing, was that this started just kind of being like a funny conversation that they were having. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, we should kill Skylar. And then they were talking about it. And then they were talking about how they could actually do it. And then they were talking about how they could get away with it. And they talked about it for months and months. But, and it started off as a joke, and it became more and more like, we could actually do this. Oh my God, we could do it. You could do it. Here's the problem, all you murder, murdering type people out there. If you kill someone you know with a motive, it's a lot harder to get away with. Hence, oh, yeah. hence you need a complete disposal of the body. You cannot leave a body if you know the person. Or, or, or you... There's a few scenarios. Well, the other that. thing is, it'll haunt you forever. And it's wrong. I've heard to say, it. it's wrong. It is wrong. You shouldn't kill people. I mean, come on. Most people. But I mean, like, how crazy is it to, to start off that, like, you guys thinking of that hypothetical... Do you ever watch the movie Rope? The Alfred Hitchcock movie wrote. Uh, well, yeah, I think I have. Where they are like talking about how they could have killed their friend, and the whole time the guys already they've already killed him, and he's like in the 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 drawer or whatever in their apartment. I can't remember the details of it, but I feel like you just ruined the movie for me. But okay, go on. I think you know that the whole time, though, okay. and it's sort of like the suspense of like 
is the guy that they're talking to going to figure out that they actually did it? Hmm. Anyway. So, so yeah, so, so this is what they were kind of like as they, as the two girls were kind of pushing the third girl out. And I guess like that, um, Skylar was kind of, you know, she was hanging out with other kids and she was, you know, making other friends, but at the same time they would still sometimes hang out. So was this all this kind of, you know, back and forth thing. And of course all the girls had Twitter accounts, which is going to come into play quite a bit. And, um, Poor Skylar. I mean, the creepy thing about, oh, I just read this creepy article about how like Facebook is like basically, you know, going to become a digital graveyard because you have so many Facebook pages of people that are dead. But well, it's true all, on all, all, all the all social. Our par- all our parents I mean, are on Facebook right now. I mean, there's a whole generation of people over well, 70 on there. All those, you know, I just looked up um, Skylar niece and here's her, here's her, um. Twitter account. So weird. I mean, it's just, it's still up anyway. So like the, she was, she was posting things like, let's see. Oh, come on. I just had it. Anyway, she posted something like, this is why I could never trust you. Like these little cryptic tweets from teenage girls, like a few days before she disappeared. Okay. All of a sudden, I mean, God, okay. Well, I, I, I hate that shit. I hate the, Okay, but that's teenager Fine. stuff. If you're a teenager, that's what you're supposed to is do. Is it really? Or you know is it's it annoying? Like half the people I know. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. It's annoying when you're like 38 and you're posting things like, worst day ever. And you're like, or like, or like, I wish things could, could have gone differently. And you're like, just tell us what happened for fuck's sake. No, no, or, or when you're 38 and it's like, it's my birthday weekend. Oh, God. Fuck, I fuck you. I don't really think I have any... Somebody who does that. I hope a clown shows up at your birthday with a bunch of balloons and a drill and just pops out your eye. Your birthday. If, you, oh if you're God. Thinking, the birthday weekend clown, just trolling social media <laughs> for people who publicly post, it's my birthday weekend. If you're over 15 years old and you have a birthday weekend, yeah, I get the old drill in the eye from Bonzo the Drill Carrying Clown. Anyways, go on. That'd be... <laughs> All right, we're going to write a horror comedy. <laughs> Got a lot of ideas here. <laughs> the angry clown that sits at the computer looking at Facebook posts and just shows up in places and clowns. No, 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 no. that could just be part of, like, it could be about a guy who was, like, really annoyed with people all the time and he just decided to kill people who irritated him. And he himself could dress up as the birthday clown in uh, one instance and go uh, with a drill and kill the it's person weird. who's having their birthday month. The description's like every movie that I love and... Pretty much every short story that I write. So, <laughs> you <laughs> someone getting annoyed of, at people and issues. just killing them in some perfect fashion. That's, That's comically creepy. relieving. Yeah. yeah. Well. Anyway. <sighs> so, back to this. <laughs> Surely, if I'm talking about this on a podcast, I'm not really a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> we hope. Yeah. Anyway, in uh, in in June of 2012, uh, Sheila goes um, on a beach vacation with her family and takes Skylar with her. So apparently they were still friends enough to go on vacation. Guess. She goes off for like a week in June. Skylar goes off for like a week in June with her friend Sheila. And apparently during the trip they were fighting a lot. So when they get back, Sheila complains to Rachel about her continuing fights with Skylar and probably complains about like, oh, she was so irritating and da, 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 da. you know, just the bitches about her when they get back. You know, some people like to just engage with people so they have ammunition to throw at them later. You know, I, yeah. I, I and that, that's yeah. actually an adult function too. It, it, it's really too bad. It's almost like a human resources thing. Like, I, well, I'm not getting all that, but like, you know, if, but if there's a problem person in your life, maybe mm-hmm. you want to go talk with them just so you can get more fodder to throw at them later when you need to, when yeah. you need it. That's some manipulative bullshit, but yeah, people do do that. Yeah. So the real creepy thing is that this was mid June when she goes on vacation with, with when Skylar goes on vacation with Sheila. So they get back. She Sheila complains. Oh, Sheila complains to Rachel about Skylar, and they make a plan. They decide to actually kill her. So on uh, July fifth, they pick her up. They they got to they they're texting her. They convince her to to sneak out of the house after work meet them up, go out and smoke pot together. So this is eerily similar to the, uh, 
At least polar. I episode. think what we've learned is that you can lure teenagers with pot. <laughs> you can lure me lure with pot. Lure them to their <laughs> death with pot. <laughs> I don't even smoke pot, but if you told me to meet you outside and smoke pot, I, I, I would show up there. Well, I mean, I think when I was a teenager, how many times did my friends say, like, hey, let's come, you know, and then you go up and then they murder you? Spoiler. No. Yeah, that's yeah. what happened. This so they, this so they pick her up. They So they had this all planned out, though. They got kitchen knives. They hid them under their clothes. They put a shovel in Sheila's car. They put bleach, paper towels, ch- clean bleach. changes of clothes. Everyone always tries to use bleach to clean out. Um, oh, okay. And then they, they text her and tell her to sneak out and meet them. So they go, they drive over. So she, she gets home from her job. They drive over there. She climbs out her window, which again, chillingly familiar. Um, gets in the car with them. They drive, I think they were about 30 miles away from her house, which is kind of an oddly far way to go. They were actually in Pennsylvania, I think. Yeah. Does that border West Virginia? Pretty mm-hmm. sure it was Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they actually went over the border. So they, but they went to a place that they'd gone before, like a familiar spot that they'd gone, you know, to go, like, it was kind of like, I think it was like in the woods near a creek. Um, so they... They go out in the woods. They're gonna they're gonna smoke, and they tell they're like, "Oh shit, we forgot the lighter in the car." So Skylar goes back to the car to get the lighter, and as soon as she turns her back to them, they and they'd already planned this out, of course. They count to three, and then they start stabbing her. They stabbed her 50 times. In the back, literally? All over. They actually, she actually got away for a minute and ran a few feet and they tackled her to the ground. They eventually tried to slit her throat because it was taking too long for her to die, I guess. But they stabbed her 50 times. Um, <laughs> they stood there and watched her die. Did they say anything mean to her as she was dying? Well, I don't, they didn't report that they said anything mean to her, but they, the, they did, it did later come out that she was saying, why as they're stabbing her which is horrific um yeah why indeed yeah why the why why i mean they were her friends well i mean do you know why i mean is there a why i will tell you in a minute so they tried to they tried to bury her with the shovel they brought but the ground was really hard so instead they dragged her down um near this kind of near it was only about he was only like 10 feet away from the side of a road, but it was kind of like out in the middle of nowhere. It was like near a creek. So they just sort of drag her body away. And then they covered it up with branches and leaves and sticks and things. They just try, kind of tried to hide it. Then they went back to the car, cleaned themselves up, changed into clothes, went home. So the next day, her Skylar's parents report her missing. But of course, missing 16-year-old girl... There's nothing to suggest she was kidnapped, so there's no Amber Alert. The police, I don't think, were terribly concerned at first because they figured, you know, whatever. Yeah, she no, ran away teenager... or she got drunk at a party and passed out. She'll show up, blah, blah, blah. I, I'm not trying to sound, like, super callous here or indifferent, but, like, I am kind of hardening my heart a little bit for these podcasts now. But, man, I the cold-blooded murders just, like, really just turn my stomach when it's... I mean, it's one well, thing, like, with Stephen it's... Grant where it's a, it's a heat of the moment kind of thing. He's upset yeah. and kills his wife. But, I don't know, just like, yeah, I mean, and again, if you're stabbing somebody like that, you're not cutting their throat, it, it's not like an instant death. I know. I mean, it's a, I don't know what they, I think a lot of times kids have seen a lot of movies or something, they think they're going to stab someone one or two times, but you don't necessarily kill someone by stabbing them. I mean, you gotta, she probably bled out. Oh, yeah, I mean. How, I mean, yeah. unless they actually did cut her throat, which I imagine is also probably harder than they imagined it would be. So, yeah. So her parents, um, Skylar's parents, reported her missing. They made missing posters. She was their only child, by the way. Awesome. Extra awesome. heartbreaking. Extra These fucking heartbreaking. Fucking bitches. So was Sheila an only child, interestingly enough. Which I feel like only children aren't that common, so it's kind of interesting. Yeah, especially in West Virginia. <laughs> sorry, sorry, West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, that was based on nothing... And uh, yeah, that's so prejudiced of you, Dave. I, I really, I don't West know. Virginians. I don't want to like a lot of stereotypes about West Virginia. Yeah. 
Anyway, well, um, no, here. these girls were all like, by the way, they were all honor students. They were like very cute girls, very clean you cut. Know, like, every dead kid's a fucking honor student. No, no, you know, so stop. That... But ser- that's not true. It pretty, oh, come oh, on. Oh, you're being an asshole. Whatever. Anyway, no, but I'm just, I'm saying these were kids. Mm. These were not like kids from the wrong side of the tracks or anything. Even these were like preppy white kids from some suburb. I want to see the teenage pregnancy stats and national honor students. I, I swear to God, everything that's something horrible happens to a kid. It's always like he was some you know kind of honor is? student. Those are the ones that get the press. Nobody gives a shit about a kid who wasn't an honor student who was kind of, that kid was kind of a loser and they got murdered. <laughs> they don't get the big press. They don't get a lot of media attention. The media loves a clean cut white kid who was an honor student. You know? Meanwhile, the Puerto Rican guy at Metal Shop who gets shot, you don't hear jack shit about it's that. It's true, though. It is true. It's true. Well, even for our own personal experience at our high school level without naming names, but like. I know. When, yeah, I don't yep. want, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go yep. into that. So anyway. But it was bullshit. So anyway, this, this, this uh, disappearance got a, a lot of me, um, media attention. So she disappeared in July, um, and they really came up with, like, nothing. They couldn't really, you know, the FBI got involved. I can't wait. Eventually, the state police got involved. This was, like, in September. They started interviewing her friends, and there was a camera outside of Skylar's apartment complex that caught her getting into a car, but it was real grainy. They couldn't tell what it was, but then they, they identified it as being Sheila's car. So then they, they interviewed Sheila and Rachel and Sheila and Rachel admitted that they had been with, with Skylar that night. But what they said was they snuck out, they went to smoke pot, they came back, they dropped her off Mm -hmm. and that was it. They never saw her again. They said they dropped her off and this was, clever of them they dropped her off at the end of the road because she didn't want the noise of the car to wake her parents up so therefore not on the camera which they had probably done before the best yes. li- the best lie is a lie that can be true but some investigator later said um that their stories were absolutely identical which is very unusual which made it seem suspect their stories were completely verbatim identical as if they'd been rehearsed but of course they said that after the fact. So, anyway. Um, yeah. So, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and guess they somehow fucked this up. Because, I mean, they... They actually it sounds... didn't, they didn't fuck it up. Really? They could have gotten away with it, probably. That's what I'm saying. No, I mean, like, they, I feel like they, they, well, they are getting away with it. Well, what happened was they did get away with it. They got away with it for a long time. Rachel and Sheila helped in the investigation. They passed out flyers. They came over to the niece's house and 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 comforted them and, you know, were... were present wow. and you know playing the parts of the Th- distraught friends quite a thin line between good and evil isn't there in the human condition there is and that's these quite girls... a jump that two 16 year girls just randomly murder their friend and then they're vigilantly helping on the search effort pieces of shit so um so what happened <clears throat> was that rachel who was the sort of the newcomer to the trio um, she had kind of a nervous breakdown in December and was m- admitted to a, a psych ward for a few days. Um, and during that time was, you know, away from Sheila, which probably kind of broke the spell. And when she got out, she went to, um, I think she, how did she get an attorney and then went to the police and told then that she knew what had happened to Skylar, and then they they asked her what happened. She said, "We stabbed her," and they actually didn't arrest her. So this was January. No, nope. they did not arrest her right away because she there was no body. I think this was yeah January third was when she told the police that that they'd stabbed her. They didn't have a body yet. They didn't have any kind of evidence. They just had this girl saying that this. It, 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 so and they should not arrest her at right. that point. Keep no, no, her no. talking. Right. Keep her it's talking. exactly what they did. Yeah. So they tried to get her to um, talk. They did get her to talk to Sheila on the phone with a with a wire or whatever, you know, oh my God. phone tap or something. Total mean girls. Try to get her to incriminate herself, which she didn't do. Okay. But she also led the police to, the, to where her remains were. And they did find the body. And then she also, they somehow got... Um, I want to reenact that phone conversation. Oh, Jesus. 
I know. I wish there were more details okay. about like what exactly like. And, and the crazy thing is like, let's reenact it. Can you? Be, did can you, Sheila <laughs> like know? Was she like paranoid enough to to think like, well, I'm not going to incriminate it on over the phone? Yes. Did she know what was up? She must have known something was up. So you can tell when someone's off. But but the really creepy thing is, is so after they found Skylar's body, because remember this whole time she's just been missing. Right. So they find her body. So but, her parents are devastated. Her friends are devastated. How many months? Six months. Oh, my God. So yeah. that, that, that's not even a body. It's just a pile of yeah, goo. Yeah, exactly. It was bones, basically. When was she killed again? She was killed in July. Huh. They found her in January. How they, oh. Or, let's see. Yes, they found her in January. January 16th. And she was left in the woods. Yes. Near water. Yeah. Yeah. It's a dental record identification. I mean, that was... Right, like, it's yeah. bones. Jesus. So, so she. But- so, but they, there were, there was some. They, they, some, they found some DNA evidence in Sheila's trunk. Um, that you know something in Sheila's trunk that was Skylar's blood. It was they f- figured that out later. But anyways, they tried to get and and somehow I'm not sure how they got that before they arrested Sheila. How would you get into someone's trunk? Search warrant. But I don't think Sheila knew about it. Yeah, search warrant. So you can do that without the person knowing? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so anyway, so that must have been what they did. So, yeah, so Rachel had confessed she they tried to use her to get Sheila to incriminate her. It didn't work, but she took them to the remains. So then that was that information was released to the family that she was dead. And then so all of her friends. So at that time, here's a real creepy part. So the day that that became public, um, her Sheila tweeted several things let me find them she tweeted worst day of my whole life then about 20 minutes later she tweeted rest easy skylar you'll always be my best friend i miss you more than you could ever know and then she posted a little photo montage of the two of them would you like to see their pictures one on the left is skylar the one on the right is the the killer. Jesus fucking Christ. I know. There's like these little adorable girls, little button nosed girls. But I mean, can you imagine? I mean, like, we're saying my whole life. And then she goes to the tr- I mean, that is creepy. She goes on Twitter and tweets these like effusive, tragic things. And then okay. apparently she also, she went over to Skylar's parents' house and like cried with them, sat on Skylar's bed, cried and cried. Her parents are Skylar's parents who just lost their only child, like, you know, patting her on the back and comforting her. And meanwhile, she's the fucking murderer. The, the, the crazy thing here, too, is what it always comes down to with murder is like, it's not really a good group activity. You should do it solo because this is this is a girl. Oh, yeah. That, this girl could have kept quiet for the rest of her life. She's the sociopath. Yeah. And she. She would have. I mean, she yeah. got away. I mean, she, she wanted, didn't feel bad about it. And she you know what? wanted to kill someone. This so year. that was January. That was mid January when that happened. Um, but they didn't pick her up for another couple of months. They didn't arrest her for another few months. Perhaps because they were waiting on that DNA evidence well, then, or something. But also, you have a girl in the psych ward who's who's that girl had been released though. So what what weirds no, me no, out I'm is a, like I'm, I'm just saying if I'm a detective, I have a teenage girl who, who's released from the psych ward who's confessed to a murder yeah. and, and she's implicating somebody else who has no... Kind of you know, iffy. Get the evidence. Yeah, absolutely. Don't, because... But what I'm wondering is, how did they keep Rachel from blabbing to Sheila? How did they keep Rachel away from Sheila that whole time? Well, at some point, if her parents got involved in the whole thing, maybe they cut a deal or they told her to shut the fuck Well, they did up, cut or... some kind of deal. So, I don't know what happened. But, so, anyway, on, on in, about a month or two later, Sheila tweeted... We really did go on three. Hmm? Sheila, one of the girls, one of the killers, yeah. tweeted, we really did go on three. They counted one, two, three. Right. She tweeted that after the body had been found. Why? Just because she's a evil, psycho, crazy, horrible person. We really did go on three. We really did go on three. It's fucked up. Yep, yeah, it is. Isn't it creepy? Why would Sheila do that, though? I mean, Because she just felt like she'd gotten away with murder, and she was feeling good about it and clever. Yeah, too bad she was... Her weakness was her need for companionship, though. 
She should have done, done a solo. Oh, well. She probably figured that the other girl would never implicate herself in a murder and go to prison for life. Yeah, it's just a lack of experience, though. Well, yeah. I mean, these duos, they almost never get away with it. Although, Except maybe they do. Maybe they we do. We just don't know about them. And this is a, this is a startling... I mean, it really... This is a really cold-blooded crime for a teenage girl. For two teenage girls. So, well, well, again, like much like Elise Poehler, which they would have gotten away with that, too. If the one guy hadn't had a... Yeah, crisis of conscience. Which is what happened to the one girl here. So they... Yeah, so they did... Um, yeah, they arrested Sheila in May, I believe. Um, they arrested her at a Cracker Barrel where she was having breakfast with her mom. Well, that just is fitting, I guess, isn't it? I don't know. I just, you know, and I can't help but feel bad that for the parents of the girls that murdered this girl because, oh my God, can you imagine? And they're probably, these were their little darling teenage girls, you know, their, their darling daughters. And, and, and then you find out your daughter's done this. I mean, oh my God. And then your life's over because now your, your daughter is going to prison. Would it, be, would it be even worse, too, if one of these girls was also, like, a blowjob queen, too? It's like it this sounds, and the murder? It sounds like, actually, like, Sheila kind of was promiscuous. I did read that somewhere. So, anyway. <laughs> probably, There's a probably, lot of shit out probably there. probably a lot of shit girls. about Sheila at this point. Yeah. <laughs> that girl a oh. hoe. Well, especially, <laughs> especially there's, like, you know... Teenagers, you know, talk, well, yeah, I knew she was a murderer because, you know, oh my God. So, anyway. She liked two things, Mountain Dew and dicks. Ew. Sorry, it's my West Virginia. Uh, I was going to make a joke comment. about Jackson. Um, <laughs> yeah. Whenever we talk about Mountain Dew, that's all I can think about. And Oriental Massages. <sighs> well, I mean, how do you put anyway. a billboard for Oriental Massage, Truck was Welcome, Open Till Midnight? That's and a, not get immediately busted. I mean, <laughs> come on. I feel like they should just say, come on, raid Vice us. Squad. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, get off your asses. I mean, hopefully it's some elaborate sting operation. But yeah, just so you guys, there's a giant billboard, 20 minute, 5 I feel like if I was a trucker who wanted to get a massage, I would stay away from that place because I'd be like, this, this is a setup. This has got to be, this yeah. This is way <laughs> too obvious. I'm going to get... But it does say the truckers are welcome, yeah. so... What to do, what to do, what to do. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> truckers welcome. Oh, God. So, anyways. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you one important part. When Rachel led the investigators to Skylar's body and confessed to stabbing her, they, of course, asked her why... Did you do it? And here's what she said. This is a verbatim quote. She said, we, we quote, didn't like her. We, we didn't, didn't like, like her. her. That was it. That was their, that was the, that was their whole motive. We didn't like her. And some people just want to kill. And they, 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 I mean, it's a good problem solver, but like. It's so interesting. It makes me like wish I'd gone into some kind of field where they study oh. brains or something because it's like why what i mean there's there's people who just sort of lack remorse about stuff but then i think there's an extra step that you have to have to be able to actually well, kill someone and, and a great filter in our society is the juvenile court system because kids are really bad at getting away with crimes mm -hmm. the sex offenders the violent criminals they're usually in the system at the time they're 14 or 15 years old mm -hmm. and the this one i mean i i, I see but these girls were 16 17 no i i but again a white girl from west virginia is not going to be on anyone's radar mm -hmm. i mean for all the reasons that society is <laughs> laid out before us here but i mean i mean clearly in her head i mean Again, people do mean things. There are mean girls. But she looked at murder as a, either something exciting or... Right. I mean, okay, to get back to like something more relatable, what about a girl that decides to get back at a girl she'll do something like sleep with her boyfriend? Right. Or do right. something... Or she'll... There's put, a huge... Embarrass her with some... Like in Carrie where they throw tampons at her or something like that. Yes. Which is a movie, not real life. But I mean, like, these are all like horrible things that no one should anyone else, right? Or whatever. I mean, I, they're not quite 
Does, it, does that make you a sociopath? Well, or getting, is it... you know, revenge on people or, like, doing, like, mean shit to people and getting back at them is, like, thrilling and satisfying in a kind of, you know, hedonistic, id-satisfying kind of way. And when you're a teenager, that's kind of what teenagers do. But, like, there's a huge jump between, you know sleeping with somebody's boyfriend and then going and taking a knife and stabbing somebody 50 fucking times and then not yeah. having an attack of conscience after it. That's the most amazing part to me, actually. Not to be like... It's not that... It is surprising that teenage girls would murder somebody. That's not normal. It is surprising. But it's it's almost like more surprising that they could have even kept quiet about it for as long as they did. Well, because I feel like... The, there's the there's the act of being impulsive and crazy enough to kill someone and then not feel bad about it and just go about your everyday life. But you've never killed anyone, right? No. I mean, I'm just saying, like the idea of like the crisis of consciousness is if you do kill someone, you have to commit, and you can't you you can't have a crisis of conscience. You have to go because once you do, you spend your life in prison. If you're a sociopath or someone that was a thrill killer for fun, that's what you want to avoid. And on a lot of these episodes that we've done. We have people that are like the um, the Browns Chicken Massacre. Mm-hmm. That guy that planned that out, he they avoided prison for quite a long time, and that yeah. was kind of the goal. He he meticulously set up the robberies so they right. could they leave no evidence behind. And uh, I forgot how those guys got caught. I know we did that whole episode. Uh, they told girls about it. Right, 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 and right. They couldn't keep shut their mouths shut, and the girl had felt bad. Well, yeah, 15 that's, years later. That's the thing. So the crisis of conscience though is is the weak spot here. But you you can't aff- if you're going to kill someone. I mean, if you kill well, someone out of necessity, you don't want to get caught. You just got to turn off that part of your brain. If you're going to be a thrill killer, you probably should do it by yourself. Or you're ready to kill your accomplice. There's going to be very few duos, murderous duos, where they are both the same kind of sociopath or right. psychopath or whatever it is that allows you to murder people without conscience. It's right. going to be way more likely that one of them is that and the right. other is a very weak Right. Follower who is manipulated into it, who's also a little bit of a psycho, but like... But like the brown chicken. The weak person who's going to feel bad or going to blab about it or going to be well, something. Brown chicken had the white guy who was a sociopath ringleader. Right. And his friend who was Latino, who never had, had any crime before or after. And right. after those murders happened, he goes on, he works, he got married, he had kids, was a good person as far as anyone would know, because he decided, you know what, I want my life. Maybe, he had, I'm sure he had a conscience, but he had to turn off the part of his brain and said... How did he, though? How do you do that? How did that not haunt him every single day of his life? What wouldn't you do for your family or loved ones? What wouldn't you do? But there had to have been a period of time between that crime and him getting that family that he loved, where he managed to not go completely insane or confess. Well, I, 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 I think most people would... Self-preservation is more important than... Self-preservation is incredibly strong in humans. You're right. And again, so if you get roped into a murder because you're weak and you confess to it, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. But ultimately, if you're the ringleader, you got to think very few people are that strong, you know? Yeah. But yeah. So back to these girls. Um, Rachel got a deal, as you might imagine. So she pled guilty to second-degree murder. Mm-hmm. Um. She gave a lot of testimony about exactly what happened. She implicated Sheila big time. Um, This is where the court transcript uh, shows that other students overheard the conversations between Rachel and Sheila talking about their murder plot, but they didn't ever report it because they figured the girls were joking. Um, She um, got a sentence of like, I think it was 10 to 30 years. Second degree murder. No, we did go on three And they things. were 18 when they were arrested, I think. But it goes back to the day of the crime, though. But so. they were tried as adults. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. And they were, like, remanded over to adult prison pretty much immediately once they're, I mean, they were sentenced. Why wouldn't you try them as adults? And why point? wouldn't you throw them in adult prison immediately? What, you're going to let them hang out in juvenile facilities till they're 21? Because they do that sometimes, right? Let them stay there until they're 21 and then that's throw them if, into adult. That's more if you're tried as a juvenile, they can keep you as a, as a ward of the state until you're 21 in some cases. But then, but aren't in some cases they have a choice they can keep them in the juvenile facilities and then when they turn 21, put them in adult prison? When they're, eight, when they're 17 or 18, I believe. 
I, forget, I mean, mm. in, in Michigan, you're, you're an adult well, at 17. But if it's like, if it's a three-year offense, I, I mean, I don't know. If you, but yeah. So that was in, in um, let's see. So, yeah, arrested in, so Sheila was arrested in, like, um, April. Then in May, <coughs> Rachel pled guilty to second-degree murder. Second degree? Yeah. Rachel, that was the one who confessed. Yeah, she was the one who second, got the deal. She was the one who got the deal. It's a pretty fucking good deal. It is a pretty I fucking give, good deal. I wouldn't deal. give her second well, degree. Well, a lot of people were kind of pissed about that because they thought, you know, this girl, everyone's saying, oh, she felt remorse, da 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 Well, she stayed quiet about it for six months, you know? I mean, anyway. Fuck remorse. Sheila, on the other hand. So Sheila's trial was... Can I, can I just pause for one second here? Yes. What's, that tweet is really bothering me, and we'll maybe we'll post an article, but, like, the fact that you put... We decided to go on three. I almost feel like Rachel retrofit that to her story. I mean, because that, that could have been about any number of things. Why? What could it have been about? We really did oh. go on three. I, anything. Inside jokes. Have you ever read a girl's, like, yearbook? Yes, inside jokes. Inside jokes are okay. driving me crazy. I'm just yeah. saying. I mean, no, like. No, I know. I know. I know. I know. But. Second degree murder just but you know what? really. But you know what? So Rachel got a good deal. Hopefully she'll be in there the whole 30 years. Sheila, on the other hand. Uh, she initially pleaded not guilty. Um, so let's see. She was charged. She was indicted by a grand jury with one count of kidnapping, one count of first degree murder, and one count of conspiracy to commit murder. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this was like true first degree murder. I mean, they had planned and planned and planned and planned. It was so. But there, but there must obvious. have been like zero physical evidence, though. It must have been entirely upon her testimony because they, I mean, they had a body. It was about, was a the body a had bag knife, of bones. The body had knife marks on the bones. There was a vertebrae with a knife mark on it but they didn't have the knives they had blood they had Skylar's blood in Sheila's trunk oh but and they where, had where, and they had the, where would the blood come from though from the but knives? listen it it was it the trial was set for January but Sheila pled guilty she just decided she pled guilty first degree murder she was sentenced to life in prison with possibility of parole after 15 years no death penalty in West Virginia. Life in prison. Pro- and I watched... Parole after fifth, one five? Yes. Fifteen years. Probably because she was young. So when she's like, you know... It's one of those things where like if you're a juvenile mm-hmm. and you commit the crime, it's some like anti-cruelty something something mm-hmm. where you have to be eligible eligible for parole sooner than mm-hmm. if you'd been an adult, right? Right, because they're being bound over and tried as adults. Mm-hmm. But at the same time... Jesus fuck yeah. Yeah, so um but I watched the um the um what's it called? They documentary? No, no, no. It was just like court court TV. From, uh, yeah. The sentencing? Yeah, sentencing, but then whatever is before that. Like there was elocution where she I don't know, where they they the, they entered their plea and stuff. Anyway. And she confessed in her plea. Yes. She, conf- she, she, I mean, she didn't stand up and say anything, but she just said, yes. They, they asked her, are you pleading guilty because you, in fact, did murder Skylar niece? And da, 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 yes, sir. So. Okay. So she confessed to it all. And um, it was really heartbreaking because, of course, various members of Skylar's family stood up and gave, you know, um, before the sentencing, gave those horrible victim statements that were just absolutely painful to listen to the father it was just heartbreaking i mean this was their only child which i don't know why it doesn't sound like it doesn't makes it sadder if you have multiple kids and one of them dies it's still horrible but somehow it's like he said we're not a family anymore they didn't have i mean it was just all gone because these two little bitches decided they didn't like her and they murdered her what fucking crazy little and he was saying you know the worst thing was is that she came around afterwards and she cried and she acted sad and we believed her and we felt sad for her that she missed her friend and she let us believe that. Ugh. This is the part of the show where I say I would stump the life out of her part of the dad and all that, but like I mean I, I hope... always like to I always want to know what happens to these people in prison. Well, I hope that dad sits down and he sees a doctor and starts eating a lot of oat bran so he can live long enough for her to come out of prison. And just bash her brains in somewhere because this is why, why I the love fuck wouldn't you? The last house on the left because it is so satisfying. <laughs> I mean, I, I cannot. The idea of getting revenge on people that hurt your loved one is 
Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm I, I don't know how people don't spend their whole life then trying to... I'd be trying to work with... I'd be trying to get somebody in prison to it wouldn't even be beat like, her up in prison. It wouldn't, I'd be like going sending like care packages to somebody in prison, some violent offender in that person's prison, and trying to get them to. It's very dirty, hairy of you. Well, like, I'm but just telling you, no. But I mean, to me, it wouldn't even be like a, a necessarily like vengeance, vengeance thing. If I had a chance to kill them, I'd go up to them and just say, "I'm sick of knowing that you're alive." And, and that's why the death penalty is so tricky because, in in my rational oh, it's, brain, it's wrong. I mean, completely in irrational. In my rational now. brain, I think. No, the death penalty is wrong because there's too much of a chance for an innocent person to die. It's 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 so like it's so Babylonian eye for an eye. Like we don't need Why to. Why anti Babylonian? You're a fucking uh, pagan. I, I mean, am not a pagan. We we I mean, you're something. We have. <laughs> Do you mean a heathen? Didn't you ask me if we can get a goat skull today and hang it up in the house? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, what was I saying? Now you broke I don't my know. train of thought. You were like ripping on Babylonian for some reason. No, no, I was saying it. It seems all like, well, we've evolved Babylonia. beyond killing people for killing. But Babylon. then, but there's certain people that you just like. This world would be a better place without this person. Most people would be better. We don't need all. We got. We have no, but people. I mean, like, I there's certain murderers and horrible people where you think I yeah. feel better knowing this person is no longer alive. As I said earlier, though, I'm kind of against. I'm against. I don't. You shouldn't kill somebody in cold blood. I mean. You shouldn't. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it, but I'm just saying. Uh, so you shouldn't what you're do saying it. is that instead of executing people in the electric chair by lethal injection or whatever, we should let the victims' families just kill them. I'd be supportive of that in a lot of cases. I'm, that's again. I, I'm saying if one of my loved ones is a victim of a violent crime, I would like to kill the person that did it. Well, and, and I'd I, find a way to get it done. Yeah. I, I'm and with there's you. no death penalty. I'm just saying. Remember you know. that guy? We talked about this like in the last episode. Like, remember the dad that like his son was being molested by the soccer? No, coach? that really had a very. He like oh. pretended to be talking on the payphone and then. Yeah. Shot him. That was what a badass, and he didn't go. He didn't. He didn't go to prison. No. He didn't get no. no. It kind of works itself out. Yeah, that was. I used to that phrase a lot. Pretty amazing. Um. Anyways, uh, so a nightmare. <laughs> A horrible nightmare version of Mean Girls. Inspired by true events. No. No. Um, I was reading like a lot of things about it, and like there were a lot of dumb articles that kept likening it to Heather's. And I was like, um, no. This is not like Heather's. This is Heather's. In Heather's, the odd girl out kills the popular girls, not vice versa. This is nothing just because it's about teenage girls. People, no. get your fucking movie references straight. Here's a little, um, a tiny, tiny, tiny little um, good note to come from this was that her parents pushed for, because an Amber Alert wasn't issued when she disappeared. It didn't fit the criteria for Amber Alert because they didn't have any reason to believe that she was in danger or had been kidnapped or anything like that. Um, but they... Um, uh, a West Virginia state legislator from the Nice Family Home District introduced a bill called Schuyler's Law that modified West Virginia's Amber Alert plan and issued immediate public announcements when any child is reported missing and in danger, regardless of whether the child is believed to have been kidnapped. Oh, yeah, because that would have made the, all the difference. They well, would have, it, wouldn't, they would... it wouldn't have, but... Yeah, that's a, that's a stupid fucking law. But you know what? Those the, the, poor the, parents, What here's, here's what that probably came poor... from. Right. It doesn't change anything. However... Imagine you're a parent and your teenage daughter goes missing and the police are basically like, there's nothing we can do. She probably ran away. She'll come. She'll turn up. She's probably staying with friends. Blah, blah, blah. And you know they aren't. And you know they're in danger. And there's no Amber Alert. And there's nothing. And they're not looking for her. How fucking frustrating could but, that be? But I would say, well, there is something we can do. We can issue a meaningless alert that'll help no one find her. I know. I know. I know. I know. So, I mean, again, people love passing laws with kids' names in it. White girl, white girls' names. Oh, I know. There's a lot yeah. of so-and-so's law. Yeah, there's no Pedro law. I'm sh- there's no, there's no, no, that's the only ethnic name I'm going to throw out there right now. So. Anyway. Pedro. Yeah. Pedro's law. <sighs> so, teenagers are scary. 
So how do you avoid murder here? I guess that's let's let's wrap that. I, mean, I don't know. It. And as the parent of a teenager, this is particularly scary because there are constant friend issues and backstabbings and. This is a literal backstabbing, though. I mean, I I, I bet you they again. I kind of Sheila did plan this out pretty well, and I wonder if she told them to turn their cell phones off so their parents can track them. You know, because you could. I mean, otherwise, what teenage girl is a smart, manipulative girl could have done all that. You guys. Turn your phones off so that your so that your, right. you know mom will you know yeah I mean can the you ping, imagine because otherwise the pings would have uh, yeah. like showed them where, where she was well they probably took her phone and destroyed it or something but yeah but the last location did they was ping there. cell phones yeah it was two thousand two thousand twelve they would have had been yeah and they, to, they had to find my she friends didn't there. yeah well you know what though maybe her phone maybe they shut it off and they assumed her phone died because that was one um, one detail that I read somewhere is that when her dad went in the morning to wake her up she wasn't there. But her her cell phone was gone, but her charger was there. So he that's what he said to the police. Like I know she didn't run away. She would have taken her charger and some other thing, like maybe her purse or something, was still there. So they could have just she could have she they could have turned her phone off after the fact. Just assumed it would, had died. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. These murderers they sometimes forget to turn the person's cell phone off or destroy it. <laughs> How far away from the house was? The- was the location 30 miles why okay why drive that far to go smoke weed with your idiot friends i don't know because they were probably this this town that they lived in was probably kind of a highly you know highly populated little suburban town and they drove out into the woods they'd been here they'd been there before i know it does sound, sound kind of far they drove across the border maybe they somehow thought it was I mean, this sounds kind of unavoidable. What's I mean, kind of amazing, though, is that they, they, they questioned these girls pretty early on because they did know that it was the girl's car, Sheila's car. And when they questioned them, their stories didn't quite match up with what was on the security camera because mm-hmm. they said that they had picked her up around 11 and then brought her back around midnight. But the the security camera showed, showed Skylar leaving it, like, after midnight. So right there, they should have been like... Okay, both of these girls told the story in the exact same way, and it was that wrong on time. They should have pressed them a little more. These were the last two people to see them alive, to see her alive. And then, of course, after the fact, the investigator is saying, like, well, you know, Sheila seemed really kind of cold and um, empty or whatever when we questioned her, and Rachel seemed really scared. Mm. Well, I mean... Yeah, by the way... You're police. How do people react to you? It's like one of five ways people react. I anyways, I get I get all nervous and stiff when I talk to police. I get nervous like when I go like I, my blood pressure kept reading high at the doctor's office last time I went because I was like nervous and I was like, why am I nervous? I'm just like, so yeah. That's why I always think about polygraphs. I'm like, man, no, people it's like, get nervous all the time. Well, this officer got all mad at me last time because he was like, I was like, you know, it was going down and I got a ticket and I was like all nervous and he was just like all sweaty. It was, Ew, it was weird. I'm editing that out. That's okay, you probably funny. should. No, it's not. Oral sex. It's just gross. Really. Okay, well, so I don't really, I mean, like, don't have friends. That's, I mean, like, really. Don't turn your back on your friends. Pat them down for knives. Don't sneak out of your house, kids. But I mean, I feel like kids This is completely go... out. This is, this is. This, I mean, I'm trying to think. I'm honestly. Just like with the Elise Pauler thing where I tried to picture it as myself well, and my existing friends well, when I was that but age. But Elise Pauler, that, that, that's, I could see some advice in this one. But this one I is try like... to picture myself here and think of my friends and think, were there any mm. of my friends that would have literally stabbed me in the back? Probably not. But like... Not at least in college. That's what you were. Can you like... Um, I mean... I mean you how did... terrifying would that be? You think you're just kind of having a little falling out. Oh, and like she had, she had been tweeting things leading up to this, like things like, you know, tired of sitting home by myself. Thanks a lot, friends, for not inviting me out. You know, so it was like they were having the normal in her mind, normal girl friendship. She's probably issues. excited to hang out with them. Yeah. You know? Oh my god, it's heartbreaking. <sighs> I snuck out of the house in high school. Yeah. A lot, and we just roamed around the neighborhood. Not a lot, but. A few times, and well, God, I mean, like I'm thinking, what if those people had lured me into the woods and stabbed me to death? That that would have been a. I guess the moral here is that shock. Your friends might stab you in the back, and you can't I really like the... <laughs> avoid that. I feel like our message at the end of every episode is like, trust no one. 
Don't trust teenage girls. Oh, my God. Yeah, but people get murdered by their spouse, by their significant other. They've been murdered by their children, murdered by okay. their parents, well, here's my murdered advice by their this friends. Teenage girl. My God. Buy a vibrator, go online, stay inside until you're 30, move to a different country, marry a man who's a quadriplegic, have his child, raise a child separately from the man, and die when you're 80. That was a really, that was a really weird... What? Tangent. What was the whole vibrator part? I don't know. That or just was... keeping her away from boys in general. Or girls. Oh, well, that's true. They'll kill that's you. Dangerous too. People are usually killed by someone <sighs> they're intimate with. Intimate. Yeah. Oh, like that poor. I think that. Did you read anything about that woman from Strangers? Can't, can't spell intimate without inmate. Um, I talked to a person that knew her, and the police haven't really seen any details about how she died. Did she work at Fraser's? Or she did. She, yeah. Yeah, and she, she was murdered in her house. Oh, it's probably so, her boyfriend. And it's like, it's like that thing in eastern Michigan where they didn't release the details of that person that died in her apartment like for two and a half years who was a twin. What? Remember that? No. She was a twin? She was a twin. She was killed, and they, they wouldn't release how she died for, it turns out she was drowned in her bathtub, I believe. Oh, <gasps> yeah. There were like a rash of m- murders at Eastern, though, over a period of a couple years. Remember, yeah, there was a girl shot in the stairwell, and there was the girl who was like murdered in her bedroom right there, over there the winter break. There was men murdered, too. For, an athlete was murdered for his shoes by two guys oh, from Detroit. Right. And one of them got, got away with the murder. He was found not guilty in Ann Arbor. So, oh. yeah. Because he argued that he was just there hanging out, and his friend shot him. But, um... Yeesh. Anyways, yeah, Eastern Michigan, it's a good school. Go <laughs> Emus. Hey, it's a big school. Most people don't get murdered there. It's not that I, big. I got a degree from Eastern. Degree in And homicide. someday, hey, this summer, I'm going to, I want to do an episode on our local serial killer who went to Eastern. And killed people from there. So it's got a history. But that was in the 60s. So yeah, it's well, totally His legacy now. is strong. So It's not that strong though because nobody outside of our area has heard of him and he was quite the horrific and prolific killer and he mm-hmm. was caught in a really yeah. theatrical amazing kind of way. Yeah. So we'll talk about him. Yeah, sometime. happy happy end of June. Happy summer. Um, let's say goodnight, Grace. Good night, Grace. All right. Stay safe. Don't get murdered. We'll see you soon. Thank you once again for listening to How to Avoid Murder and Other Awkward Situations. If you're listening to this, that means you haven't been murdered, and we've done our job. Make sure you check us out on Facebook at How to Avoid Murder, or online on the World Wide Web at avoidmurder.com. And until next time, stay safe. <laughs>